Hello, my name is Robert Sloan. I'm president of Houston Baptist University. Thanks for joining us again in this series of the secrets of the Christian experience. Now, these are the mysteries that are, are hidden in Scripture. These are the, the, uh, the, the ways of wisdom, the hidden counsels of God that have now been revealed through Christ. These are, these are secrets that, that the world uh, does not acknowledge. These are things that are counterintuitive in many instances. These are surprising insights and ways of life, but they are vital uh, for Christian living. And I'm glad you've joined me as we look at a number of these uh, secrets in Christian experience. Uh, today, uh, our, our mystery is the notion of hope as a habit of the mind. Now, sometimes uh, it's not... Uh, it's not popular to be hopeful. Uh, there are some folk who actually seem to cultivate a cynical habit of mind. It's one of the things that uh, college professors and probably also high school uh, teachers notices, notice as well uh, when it comes to, uh, comes to uh, mid-teens or, or adolescents that one of the things that a student likes to do is, is shock his or her uh, teacher or professor uh, with their cynicism to express doubt and uh, mistrust and so on. It, it seems to be the, the mark of, uh, of maturity uh, to be cynical uh, and doubtful. And of course, uh, we are supposed to have a certain uh, analytical mindset. We are supposed to be discerning. That's uh, clearly the way of wisdom. But there is a certain uh, path that, that goes, uh, that goes uh, beyond mere uh, analysis and, and discernment and, and thoughtful reflection that, that borders on, uh, really it begins to border on despair. Uh, it's the way of cynicism, it's the way of constant doubt, and those things can become a habit of the mind. I think we find this uh, very popular and almost rampant in our culture. Suicide rates are very high uh, among young people. They're also, they're also growing in certain segments of the older population as well. Uh, despair is a function of the loss of hope. When you see no better way out, when you do not see that there is, is a future that God has in His hands for you, when you don't see the, the possibility of things getting better, it can lead to a certain habit of the mind. It may not be detectable by other people, and, and oftentimes when suicide occurs, it can be a very surprising thing. But the things that are going on in the mind uh, can become a habit, habits of cynicism and despair and doubt. It's very important for us as Christians to develop uh, the notion of hope. Hope, a friend of mine told me one time, and at first I thought, that's a strange way of putting it. This friend of mine said, hope is a virtue. And I thought, my first thought was, no, hope is just the response I feel when I see a good possibility in front of me. But it's really deeper than that. Uh, this, this thoughtful Christian teacher, um, she was actually saying that hope is, is a habit and a virtue that we need to cultivate. And so I, from that point on, it was a number of years ago, I've, I've tried to notice that sort of thing in the Scripture. And of course, in one of the uh, most uh, famous passages in all the Bible, 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter, one of the attributes of love is that it bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. It means that in the, in the midst of the troubles of this life, the all things of challenge and difficulty and tribulation and suffering, it means that we endure, that we are patient, uh, that we still uh, maintain our trust in Christ, and that we know that the God whom we serve is the God of resurrection hope. He's the God of the future. He's the God who has not only uh, acted in the past uh, to redeem us uh, through Christ, but He is the God now who in Christ and by the power of His Spirit points us forward to the future. He's the God of resurrection. He's the God of the new creation. Uh, he's the God of forgiveness. He's the God who sent His Son for us who will intercede on our behalf as we saw from Romans chapter 8 earlier, who will intercede on our behalf on the last day. He's the God of forgiveness. He's the God who will, 
who uh, will create uh, heaven and earth in a, in a new and vibrant way. He will restore all things and he will place us as his children in charge as well of the new creation. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 6, very strange passage, do you not know that we shall judge angels? Well, we don't know all the implications of a statement like that, but it's very consistent with what, Paul, with what uh, the, the author of Revelation, what John says, for example, in, in Revelation chapter 7, when he refers to the fact that uh, the day will come when the people of God who have suffered will nonetheless serve Him. We will do God's work night and day in the resurrection age. And, and so it is. Uh, we, are, we are people who have been given work. We are people who have been promised salvation from the promises of Abraham which have come to fulfillment in Christ and we are people who have been given promises that we are not destined for wrath but for salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. We've been promised that nothing can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We've been told quite clearly uh, that in the face of death we should not grieve as those who have no hope. Uh, but just as, as uh, uh, God has made His promises to us in the same way that Christ died and rose again, even so uh, God will bring with Him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. The psalmist uh, frequently uh, points to, uh, in, in what we call the lament psalms, the psalmist points to his grief, his despair, his worry. But there is always, even in the, in the most... Uh, difficult and challenging of the lament psalms. There is always this word of hope that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who appeared to Moses in the burning bush, the God who has made promises to Israel is the God of all hope and rescue. Uh, psalm 42, one of my favorite psalms, uh, you get the psalmist uh, in, in a sense almost uh, uh, talking to himself. He reflects inwardly and he tells himself, do not despair because the God of Scripture, the God in whom he has placed his hope is the God who will one day rescue his people from exile. The Scriptures had told Israel that if you are disobedient, you will go into exile. And many of the Psalms reflect the fact that Israel is in exile, but Israel can still pray. And, in, and though they are enslaved, though they are suffering terribly, and though they are being mocked, by their enemies and their God is being ridiculed, that they need not despair because God is the God of rescue. The psalmist in 42.5 says, Why are you in despair, O my soul? That expression is literally a good translation, but it's a Hebraism. And it basically means you do not need to despair, O my soul. You do not need to become uh, inwardly disturbed. Trust in God. Hope in God, the psalmist says, for I shall again praise Him, the help of His presence. O oh my God. The psalmist uh, says that over and over uh, in Psalm 42, and even also it's referenced again in Psalm 43. You do not need to despair. Um, we need to be reminded that though there are real problems and challenges and difficulties, we must not give in to the habit of unhappiness. We must not give in to the habit of despair. Uh, there are times when it it's can be a very small part of human everyday experience where something goes wrong and we get angry. Something goes wrong and we pout. But then, but then we allow ourselves, our anger, our frustration, our disappointment, our pouting, we allow it to go forward. We nurse it along. We sort of carry it further. Beware of nursing your hurts. Beware of nursing your unhappiness. It can lead to a habit of mind that feeds upon itself uh, and, and then ultimately can lead to despair. That's why the scriptures repeatedly tell us to be thankful in all things. Thankfulness is the acknowledgement that God is the sovereign Lord no matter what has happened. Even in the worst of times, we can be thankful, we can trust Him, we can know that our future is in His hands. The Scriptures make it abundantly clear that one day Christ will return, that one day He will remake heaven and earth. Uh, behold, Paul says, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 50, I tell you a mystery. Even though uh, this body has to die, 
uh, a seed has to go into the ground and die in order to have a resurrection body. There is a further mystery, he says, about the resurrection future. We shall not all die, but in Christ we shall all be transformed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable. This mortal must put on immortality. This corruptible must put on incorruptibility and we shall be transformed. The brokenness of our hearts, our minds, our bodies, our ailments, the brokenness of our creation, the evils, the cynicism, the violence, the cruelty, the barbarism, those things will be, will be put to rights and, and uh, we will be healed and the world will one day be transformed. And when that happens, then will come about the scriptural saying, O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, grave, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin. The power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory. Romans 8, Paul said, in all these things of suffering, we are more than conquerors. It's a similar word. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hope is a virtuous habit of the mind and must be cultivated. Therefore, encourage one another and take hope and uh, uh, encourage one another, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that our work is not in vain in the Lord, knowing that our commitments to the Lord, however menial, however routine, uh, however insignificant they may seem, they are kept in the memory, the mind, the hands, and the power of God. And God will restore and redeem and resurrect. Our citizenship is in heaven, from which we eagerly await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will with His coming transform the bodies of our humble status into conformity with the body of His glory, even by the power that He has to subject all things unto Himself. John says in 1 John 3, he says, uh, For as yet it does not appear what we shall be, but we do know this, that when He appears, we will be like Him. And the one who has this hope purifies himself. Be a people of hope. Be a people of courage. Let us be a people who cultivate the habit of hope and trust and patience, waiting for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.